Hello everyone, Roy Kirkhoffs here. This is a photo I took of Elizabeth Tower in London, England, which contains the Big Ben, uh, back in 1999 or 2000. Shot it with a point and shoot camera on film. I scanned the negative and then printed it on at 18 by 12 inches on Breathing Colors uh, Vibrance Matte Photo Paper. So you can print with pretty much any inkjet printer on this type of paper. So first what I would like to do is, I would like to mount it on this self-adhesive backboard to give it some support. Then I'm going to varnish it, put on a spray, uh, spray a varnish on, I mean, to keep the inks from running. And then when that's dry, I'm going to paint on a transparent uh, acrylic medium to uh, that that will make it ready to hand color it with oils so let's do it so first you peel back the cover and then line up the photo and then you push down in the middle here on the edge go outward pushing down onto the self adhesive and then I like to use my laminator to finally mount the photo on the adhesive board by pulling away the cover as it goes through. And in this step, I spray on golden gloss archival varnish to uh, fix the inks. And I, I did this two times with drying time in between. And after the varnish is dry, which is normally after a couple of hours, I will brush on this golden acrylic medium. This is golden gloss glazing liquid. So this is what will finally seal the image and we can paint on this. The coating is dry. Actually, I like to wait like two or three days just to be sure it's completely dry. Sometimes it looks like it is, but it has happened before that when I started painting on it, I actually wiped off part of the coating, which ruined it. So, so let's use Marshall Foyer oils for this one. I would like to do like a subtle sunset gradient from top to bottom. So we'll start with blue at the top. This is sky blue. Most of photo oils are very translucent oils, as the name suggests it's meant for this kind of work, to color black and white illustrations and photos. And I like to use mostly cotton rounds and Q-tips with these types of oils. So we we'll pick some up on the cotton round and then just start wiping it onto the photo on top of the coating. And the cool thing about working with these oils and the coating that we put on the paper is that it allows you to remove paint. So you can see I went on the tower here, but we can remove that later. And I find this is the easiest way to work instead of trying to prevent not going over the tower I'd just like to remove it later so I'm putting it on with circular motion So I actually 
I mentioned at the beginning that I was here in 1999 or 2000. Actually, I checked with my brother and it was 1999. So he's a landscape architect and he was for several months doing an intern project in London. Maybe a little bit more blue than normal, than what I normally do. Then the next color will take cobalt violet. New cotton round. And we'll put that here. You know what? I want that to be more subtle, that transition. So let's take a Q-tip, pick up some of that cobalt violet and mix it in with our blue here. Let's see. Yeah, that's what I would like to do. So these are oils and it's paint so you can mix them. Yeah, that's a nice, uh, subtler, more subtle transition. Actually, I like it. There's like blotches of. It's not a straight gradient down either now, which I like. Let's let's keep it that way. Let's add some more cobalt violet with the blue. Maybe a new cotton round. You can see there's some imperfections in the coating here. Okay, so let's take some carmine. And some more blue. Mix those. Probably a little bit of blue. A lot of carmine, so that should give us again a nice transition towards more warmer colors. Let's see how this turns out. A little more blue, maybe. Okay, let's try this. Take this side of the cotton round now. Maybe even go up a little more into the previous areas that we've colored.
little bit more towards purple now. You can see it went it went a little bit more towards purple again here. That's because I there was more blue in it. But that's fine. Don't have to have a nice linear gradient here. So you can see there's a lot of imperfections in here, all these little dots, which might be little dust particles or something that got into the coating when it was drying. So you might want to put this in a more like dust-free environment. I mean, it's, it's not bad. It adds to the charm of look an old photo anyway. So, but let's see if we can do like with a Q-tip. Can fix that a little bit. So you can actually fix it slightly. It's just paint that bunches up against little bumps that, that's better okay let's take some orange so my orange broke open the tube and it's now on this other tube so I just grab it that way See, I still want to mix in a little bit of the blue from earlier, so let's do this. There we go. Yeah, we'll even go up here again. Impression of clouds. And I'll show you if you even want a little more uh, an impression of clouds. And if you remove some of the paint right above where I added that orange, it even looks more like a cloud. So the sun is kind of shining underneath here, adding some warmth to these clouds. Like that. Okay, let's take some more orange from the side of my tube and some yellow. giant tube of yellow right here there nice orangey yellow maybe I want this also up here Okay, that's a little rough, so let's take a clean cotton round. Okay. 
and smooth that out a little. There we go. Let's see, a little smoother up here. Okay, now let's take a clean cotton swab and remove some of that paint up here. It got on the tower. how it picks up the paint again it's pretty easy to remove so you couldn't remove this this easy if we had just printed it um, you, uh, not coated it so if you would have just printed on the paper and not coated it the, the paint would be sucked into the paper and you cannot remove it like this anymore but with the coating we still can there we go. And then the tower itself. Let's add some burnt sienna to that. And maybe a light orange to the clock face as if the sun is also on there. So with in this case, now of course we don't want to go over the lines and go onto the sky. So I'm going to going to be very careful on the edges can still put it on pretty roughly away from the edges and then close to the edges we'll use a q-tip Maybe add a little bit of variation, some thicker here, thinner over there. Okay, like that. 
And let's take a clean cotton round, grab some of that paint, the burnt sienna, and carefully add it to the edges here. Let me just go over the clock face here too. Yeah, looking pretty good. Let's see if we still have enough orange. We do. Put it on the face here and then take a clean one and remove it because that's a little too much. I want it just very light. And down here, because it's like all in, in the shadows, I think some blue would be nice. It's also a nice reflection again of what's going on at the top here. So let's grab a little bit of sky blue. In the original photo, it was also very blue looking down here. guys there you go and this is it and here we go it's all done so we added a nice colorful sky to this photo of the Elizabeth Tower with the Big Ben Added some burnt sienna to the building itself. Um, so this was printed on matte paper, sprayed, then coated with an acrylic coating so we can color it with Marshall photo oils. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time.